Hi, I'm Monica and I am super excited and grateful to be here with you today and share with you the journey that I have been on since August 12th of 2019 uh, when I first had uh, the idea for my invention called Jeremy. So the whole process has been a real gift and an amazing opportunity for a mom of two-year-old twins who works, juggles school and the kids' school and everything else in between. Um, it's hard to keep up and when everybody is constantly sick and everybody's telling me that that is the norm in our society as a new mom I feel that that's not okay and I don't want to live in that world where um, my kids can't be healthy just because they go to school so I'm really excited to share with the world and share with you and as a matter of fact you will be the first to know that um, we now have an option for pollution a barrier between our hand and the world so that no matter what it is that we're touching grabbing doing with the world whether we're using doors doorknobs buttons touch screens gas station pumps pushing on actual doors whatever it is that you look at and you don't want to touch that you use your clothes that you use your knuckles everything you can think of except for your hand and especially all that paper that we're using to leave bathrooms and just wasting so many, so many trees and now we have a solution we have a wonderful barrier this is Jeremy he's a buddy between you and the world and this will be wonderful because it's reusable it's washable you can just wash your hands right along with Jeremy put it in its case which always keep the germs contained when and not in use and then you just wash when you're washing your hands. So let me share with you a little bit about the process. Yeah. So this is my life. I have two-year-old twins running around 24-7 and really um, doing all of this. And each one of these molds has taken anywhere from six to eight hours to complete just to get any of these prototypes. And the process has just been such an opportunity. I'm so excited to share it with the world. Um, so yes, first thing I did is had the thought, you know, there could be a barrier between our hand and everything that we see untouch. The process really started with an idea and I had some products at home like some pipe cleaners and a workout band so I put those together to start to get a feel for what it was I was trying to create and what it was I was trying to achieve with that goal and so from there, I ordered some latex and made a mold just like these and poured the latex and was not quite getting what I was going for. Um, I'm not really sure that that was what I wanted to do. So what I decided to do next is um, reach out to a manufacturer um, for silicone and they were kind enough to send me some samples um, which showed me different barometers for the silicones which gave me an idea of how stretchy they are and I was able to figure out which one would be best for me and for my invention. And when they sent me the silicone just a couple days later in part A and B, I just have to mix half and half of those parts um, in order to get what I'm going for. And now I'm starting to get closer to the result I'm wanting to have, um, although there's going to be a seal that will go on this silicone as well. Um, and that'll happen in the manufacturing process, but I'm getting a lot closer and closer to what my vision is. Here's a quick preview of how to uh, get a prototype made up. So I'm making out of clay, which most of us have right around the house in our crafts closet. I'm making a prototype the way I would like for it to be. I'm making it a little bit wider and just a little bit different size from the ones I've already made um, because now I have chosen this, this shape I want, but now I have to play with all the different um, sizes of that shape to make sure I get just what I want. Um, and then I'm going to be pouring plaster of Paris over my clay mold here and then I'm going to make these molds so that I can put my silicone into them and eventually end up with my um, prototypes. So this is how you can create anything. And sometimes when you're trying to get your work done, you will have obstacles. Like a giant cat trying to squish your mold every night. 
So always remember, it's not about what you have to do, it's what you get to do. So again, what's really great is that you don't always have to have things that you bought at the store in order to get some work done. So I'm just using a regular oil that's here at the house. And right now I am gonna saturate my clay jeremy that I have made. So once you have your clay creation nice and shiny, I put that oil all over inside, on both sides. Make sure you got in there really well because I don't want to make sure it really doesn't like stick to my mold. And now what I've done is I've measured out two cups of the Plaster of Paris and that's about how much I need for this size um, object. So for two parts of the Plaster of Paris, you use one part water, which I measured out here. I'm going to get this mixed up and I'll show you the consistency you want to have. And then I'll show you how to pour it on in. Alright, so I have um, the Plaster of Paris. is pretty well mixed up. You want to make sure there isn't any lumps left anywhere. There isn't any powder left stuck to the bottom. Oh, looks like there was a little lump there. Just want to make sure it's nice and smooth. Not too thick, but also not too thin. And then I'm going to start pouring it into my clay prototype. So one of the tricks I learned is that in order to avoid air bubbles as you're pouring it in, it is actually better to pour in a little bit slower rather than faster. So what I found is that pouring it in with my spoon here and letting it build up layer by layer inside versus then trying to pour the whole thing at once, it actually does prevent air bubbles from um, forming. So. I'll keep that going for a little while and then I'll show you another trick. So last thing I want to do before I totally cover my mold is I want to get into where those holes were and I want to just get any of those air pockets that might still be in there and get them out. Now I'm just using a chopstick to do that. So again, you didn't need to go or get anything. Sometimes you can just create with what you have at home. I'm going to keep pouring some more in because you want to make sure you cover everything up nice and thick with the uh, plaster. Alright, so this is the mold that's all nice and dry. I always give it extra time so that um, I don't have any issues trying to get it out and have it break. And then to get it out, just loosen it up a little bit. And it should pop right out. And there's my mold. Now I need to pick out this clay out of it, which is gonna take some time. Um, this process is why we put that olive oil on there so that it's not as easy or as difficult to go ahead and get that out. Um, this part is easy, but now I have to actually physically pick out from all that curve under there, this clay out of here. So the picking out, it really does get a little tricky and you have to have focus and patience and you might only be able to do a little bit at a time but if there's perseverance and things that you do in life and you see the end result no matter what no matter how challenging something is if you know that you're going to get to what you want to get to by continuing on then that's all you have to do is just keep going on and um and eventually you will get there so next i went ahead and Put the oil on the mold as well and then just you can see what I want from my silicone nice and smooth very easily moving but that is not going to last for very long so you want to go ahead and get that silicone in there as quick as you can without air bubbles so you want to keep kind of making sure you're sticking something in along the way with the um, with the silicone I'm going to keep moving pretty quickly because it'll start to gel up pretty quick. I can even pour it a little bit faster this way. And you have to make sure you stick some uh, a toothpick or I just use my spoon here. And get those ear bubbles out because 
have some deep pockets down there, so depending on your mold, you may not. It's always good to double check. And then, that looks like a pretty full mold, maybe just a little bit more. I don't want to overflow it too much so that it doesn't go dripping off the sides. It looks pretty good. All right, so there it is. Let's uh, show you how to pull it up. All right, so at this part, we're going to pull the silicone out and want to make sure we pull it up instead of this way. I'm going to pull it this way so that it doesn't break the mold. And then you just want to gradually pull that out. And do the same on the other side. Pull up your edges and gradually pull it out this way because the plaster of Paris mold will break if you're not careful enough. And voila, here we go. We have close to a finished uh, product and we're gonna trim that up and go from there. And there it is. It's all trimmed up, ready to go. And you just pop your hands in and you're ready to go. Pick up anything and everything from doors and handles to the products in the store. Just all do our part and think of a problem and take the time to figure out a solution, create something, and then, you know, go out there and conquer the world safely um, with your journey. So life the way that it is, it really is um, a little mini miracle to be here today. And I'm just really excited to be here. And just please remember you and the kids are the most important thing there are. And our kids' safety, our kids' health, um, and also the inspiration that we create within them to pursue their dreams and their goals in life, you know, that is the most important thing we have. So let's all go out there and live, enjoy life, and create. Thank you. What are you guys doing? What's going on? Hey, Jackson. Are you creating with Mommy? Yeah? Thanks. Jeremy World!